my friends welcome back to the avocado toast budget my name is Lexa today I am going to walk you guys through how I am budgeting our next paycheck in our joint account I'll be perfectly honest I have not been doing very well at keeping up with recording our transactions and reconciling and all of that in YNAB so I will show you how I do that here because I always make sure that we are fully reconciled and good to go and all of our transactions are input into YNAB before we budget our paycheck just in case I've forgotten things or we over budget somewhere we can use our paycheck money for that so I'll show you all of that and I'll also show you how we input our paycheck and then go about budgeting that but before we get into it don't forget to hit that like button down below it really helps boost this video to the top of the YouTube algorithm and helps more people to find this content also make sure that you hit that subscribe button and push that notification bell that way you get notified every single time that I upload let's get into it okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is click over here and go to our joint account budget and in here it says that we have $1,802.80 so I'm gonna make sure that that matches up to our joint account right now which looks like I'm off by nine cents I don't know why so I'm just gonna go ahead and reconcile that add that nine cents into here so I'll show you how to reconcile so since I'm only off by nine cents I'm not gonna waste my time trying to figure out how I got off by that so I'm just going to click no because that's not my balance and instead I'm going to put in my actual balance it'll show you here that's a nine cent difference continue create adjustment and finish and we're good to go. So we are good, cleared on our checking account for our savings. We did get a little bit in interest this month and for interest guys, I always just reconcile it because it's usually like less than a dollar. So I just make sure that all of these buttons here are cleared, which just means the transactions have fully gone through your account. Then I hit reconcile, I hit no. So in this example, our savings account is actually at $876.10. So I type that in here. It shows that there's a 28 cents difference, which makes sense because it's showing on here that our monthly interest that was paid was 28 cents. Click continue, create adjustment and finish, and we're good to go. So now our checking and our savings account match what is actually in our checking and savings account. Our credit card is probably where I have forgotten to put in some of our transactions. So let's see. The last transaction that I have here is from the 11th and it was our T-Mobile bill. And I have this payment from our checking account to pay off our credit card. So looking on here, I have six transactions that I haven't put into YNAB yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna click add transaction. The first one is from Ring. It is this fixed expense for $3. Click save. Add another transaction and then we have our pets, be pets best insurance Oop, clicked on the wrong one that one goes in pay this one was the 1848 and then we have another one pets best this one was the 23 and then we went to CVS to get some things that I'm just going to take out of our household items that was $39.92. And then we went ahead and got DoorDash yesterday. And both of us ordered from two different places. So we're gonna use that for eating out. $26.23 was one of them. And then $32.48 was the other one. Okay, so my total balance should be $265.72. And it is, so we're good to go there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click reconcile. We're all good to go, that clears those out. Now to add our paycheck. So our paycheck is going to go into our checking. So I've clicked checking, add transaction. The payee is it's Liz's paycheck. So I just name it Liz paycheck. It's going to go into to be budgeted. And this one is an inflow because it's cash that we're getting in. This one is $306. Click save, go to our budget and it's going to show up here in to be budgeted along with like the few cents that we got from reconciling our account. So we're actually good to go for January. So I'm actually just gonna click over here to February and see what else we need to fund for February. So in YNAB, I have all of my categories have goals set up in them, which makes it like really easy for me to just go through and budget. 
If you want to see how I set up our joint account, everything that I did from start to finish, including the goals that I set up, how I decided how much I was going to put in there, I will link up above the video of me setting up our 2021 budget. It is a little bit different than what we were doing in 2020, which the past videos that I've done of us paycheck budgeting have been with our 2020 budget, but this one is our 2021. So if you want to see how that is done, that will be linked up here. I'll also put it in the description box down below. But because I have goals set up on all of my categories, it is really easy for me to just click and highlight these goals. And if I click one goal, it'll come over here and next to this it says underfunded. And on here it says underfunded 688. What this tells me is that I need $6.88 to pay off that category for this month. But what we can do to make it really easy is usually I just go through here and I look to see which one of these are blue, um, which I have had a few questions from people asking why my budget looks like a little bit different than theirs, why mine are blue instead of yellow, why I have this days of buffering thing up here. There's like some other things that are a little bit different as well. That is because I have the YNAB extension. So it is just a browser extension. It's called the toolkit for YNAB. And you can see up here, I have this on and you can open settings and go through and change like so much about your budget. So that's why some of these are blue. You can change things about your budget screen. You can change things about like reports and literally like anything <laughs> that you wanna do to your YNAB budget, you can do it here. So that is what I have. That's why mine might look a little bit different than yours. So just as a heads up, if you're looking at yours and you're like, mine does not look quite the same, it'll probably look very similar um, just with like a few different differences, that is why. So anyway, I go over here and I look at what are the blue categories because that means that they're either underfunded or they're not funded at all for the month. The green ones mean we're good to go. So I am going to look over here and highlight all of our blue categories while also paying attention to this underfunded button over here to see what it is at. And if I click all of our under, underfunded categories for our fixed expenses, that is going to be $111.13. So if I look up here in our to be budgeted, I know that I have enough to cover all of those. So if I just click this underfunded button, it automatically puts the exact amount into each category that I need because I already have goals set up for it. So YNAB knows how much I need for this. This is like one of my favorite parts about YNAB because if I wasn't walking you guys through this, it would literally take me less than 30 seconds for me to budget. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my variable expenses. I am going to click and pay attention to the number that is here versus the number that is in my to be budgeted because this is how much money that we have to budget left from our paycheck this week. So this is a good stopping point. If I click on this eating out, you'll see that it says underfunded $200, which means in order to fund these three categories, I would need at least $200 sitting here in my to be budgeted category and I don't have that. So I'm going to actually unhighlight the eating out click the underfunded button for household and cat food and litter and then I'm going to see if there's some other things that I can fully budget instead. Now this is totally just preference. If you are living paycheck to paycheck and you know hey I have these bills coming up I need money for these categories fund those first. If you know you only have let's say this $95 left to budget but your goal is to spend $300 a month on groceries, but you can't meet that goal yet, but you need food because you're living paycheck to paycheck, you have no food and no money in groceries, put some money in groceries. Even if it's underfunded, that is totally okay. This is all about what works best for you. Since we are budgeted ahead now, which our joint account was not always budgeted ahead, uh, but since it is, I don't have to worry so much about what is the next thing that needs to get funded. Really, I just do it based on I want to fund as many categories as I can rather than like leaving a category partly funded if I don't have to. So I just go through here. I can't fund eating out yet, but maybe I can fund whoops and then our gummies, which I can. So I'll click this underfunded button and that leaves us with $50 left. So I'm going to go down here and go to our savings goals. And this is perfect because the things we forgot about savings goal comes to $50. So if I click this underfunded button, that leaves us with 24 cents. And we actually have a spare change category where we put the like little extra change that is from our budgeting into to just kind of add up over time. So I'm going to put that in there. 
you'll see this turn to green. That means that I'm good to go. I have given every single dollar that I have a job. And then if I am curious and I wanna know how much more money do I need to make it through this month, I can just go through and highlight all of my categories come over here to this underfunded and I can see that I need $213.82. So I like to keep this in mind because we like to stay at least a month ahead in our budget. That basically acts as our joint account emergency fund because if anything were to happen to God forbid both of our incomes, we could at least make it through that next month, probably even longer if we started to split up our savings goals and all of that and if we really cut back. But with what we're spending now, we could still make it through at least a month of no income from either one of us and be good to go. So I like to look at this number because I know that I only have one paycheck left to budget in the month of January from either one of us and it's going to be my paycheck. And I know off the top of my head that the paycheck is around $400. So we are going to be good to go and we'll have everything covered for the month of February, which will keep us a month ahead in our budget. But this is why I like to set up goals for every single category that I have in YNAB. Even if you don't know exactly how much you're going to be spending on those things, like household items and cat food, we might not end up spending all of that money or we might end up spending more of it. We might have to move some things around, but these are pretty good estimates based on our spending habits and, and we've learned from it. We've changed it. We've figured out what works for us and, and sometimes we have new expenses or we drop expenses and things have to change, but this at least gives us a good picture of are we on track to make sure that all of our expenses are met? Not just our fixed expenses, but also those things like variable spending with household items, groceries, gas, all of that. Now groceries and gas are separate. Those are in our personal account budgets. And I have a video of showing you how I set up mine in YNAB that I will link up here, but it's the same exact concept no matter what your expenses are. Okay friends, that is it for today. That is how we budget our paychecks and YNAB and how we reconcile and make sure that everything is good to go. Don't forget, if you wanna learn more about saving, investing, paying off debt, and how to finally feel more confident with your money, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye.